Good morning, Grade Three. A warm welcome to the English class. In the previous class, we had discussed a few exercises from the chapter A Visit to Jaipur. We'll see the rest of the exercise today. So today, we'll start our discussion with the punctuation exercise. Afterwards, we'll discuss the dictionary skills. Then we'll discuss the writing exercise, and then we'll discuss the my word bank exercise. So all of you now, please turn to page number forty-two in your English reader. Do you see the heading punctuation? So here in this exercise, it talks about the use of commas in quoted sentences. So there is a small knot given in that page. Let's read the knot. Look at your textbook. Read these sentences. Father said we are going to spend some time in Jaipur. Riya said. I will eat a kachori. Tom commanded, "Stand up." Mother smiled and said, "I have made chocolate pudding for you." So, in these sentences, the exact words of the speaker are quoted. We use a comma before the exact words of the speaker. Here, it means that see the first sentence. Father said, "We are going to spend some time in Jaipur." There, you can see the words of the father are given within quotes. And before the quotes or before the exact words of the speaker, you can see a comma is inserted. So father said after the word said, you can see a comma there. In the following sentences too, you can observe the same pattern. The exact words of the speaker will be given in quotes within quotes, and before the quotes, you can see a comma is inserted. So right below this knot, you can see an exercise is given in your textbook. Let me read the question to you. Now add commas to these sentences. A few sentences are listed there. Let's see the first one. My mother said, "I'm going to the market." Do you see the exact words of the speaker? Who is the speaker here? My mother is the speaker here. And what did she say? She said, "I am going to the market." You can see the exact words of the speaker is given within quotes. Mother is the speaker here, and Her exact words are, "I am going to the market." Do you see these quotes? So, where do we insert the comma here? Right before the quoted words. So, where you should put the comma after the word said. So, the sentence can be rewritten as, "My mother said, comma, I am going to the market." Now, follow the same format to insert comma and rewrite the sentences given here in this exercise. You can rewrite the sentences in your notebook. Now let's see the next part. So the next part is about dictionary skills. So all of you might have used a dictionary. Have you noticed how words are arranged in a dictionary? The words in a dictionary are arranged according to the alphabetical order. So there is a small knot given here in your textbook. Let's read the knot. Please look at your textbook. It says you have learned that we arrange words in the alphabetical order. By looking at the first letters of the words, for example, apple, biscuit, dog, mango, teacher. Do you see these words there? You can see the first letter of each of these words is highlighted in red, and these words are arranged in the alphabetical order. Which means, check out the first letter of each of these words. See, A comes before B, and B comes before D. And D comes before M, and M comes before T in the English alphabet. So these words are arranged according to the alphabetical order. So we can arrange words in this way when the first letter of each of the words are different. Now, what if the first letter of each of the words is the same? Let's see. When the first letters of the words are the same. We arrange the words in the alphabetical order by looking at the second letter of the words. For example, cat, clear, cook, crab. Now you see in all these words here, the first letter is the same. It is the letter C. So what do we do? We have to check the next letter. We have to check the second letter, and we can see the second letter in these words are A, L, O, and R. So we have to follow the alphabetical order in the case of the second letters, and hence we have arranged these words. Now, what if the second letter is also the same? Let's see. 
When the first and second letters of the words are the same, we erase the words in the alphabetical order by looking at the third letter of the words. For example, cap, cake, call, cane, car, case. See, in all these words, the first letter is the letter C. The second letter is the letter A. Now, since the first and second letters are the same, we have to look at the third letter. And you can see the third letter in each of the words is different. And see the word cap and cake. In cap, the third letter is B, whereas in cake, the third letter is K. So which letter comes first in the English alphabet, B or K? We know B comes before K. So the word cap will come before the word cake in the dictionary. The same way, cake will come before call. Why? Because K will come before L in the English alphabet. So this is the rule we have to follow when we are trying to arrange words in the alphabetical order. And this is how words are arranged in a dictionary. So keep this in mind and you have to move on to the exercise part. So in page number 43, there is a question, arrange the words in each set in alphabetical order. I'll show you one example. The first set is bear, banter, ballad. Now can you tell me which word will come first in a dictionary? See the first letter B, B, B. The first letter is the same in all these words. What about the second letter? The second letter is A in all these words. So let's have a look at the third letter in each case. The third letter in bear is R, whereas the third letter in bander is N, and the third letter in ballad is L. So which comes first in the English alphabet? Is it R or N or L? We know L comes before N and N comes before R. So can you tell me what is the right order of these words if we are looking these words in a dictionary? See, ballad will come before banter and banter will come before bear in a dictionary. So this is how you can arrange these words in alphabetical order. Now there are three more sets of words given there. You have to check out the words given in each set and arrange the words in alphabetical order. You can write down your answer in the notebook. Now let's discuss the next section and this is the writing exercise and this is about creative writing. Now it says, imagine that you have visited a new place. Write a paragraph to describe the place and your experience there. So this is about writing a paragraph. So we have discussed about the rules to follow while writing a paragraph before. So in a paragraph, it will only be discussing a single central topic or a central idea. So in a paragraph, the first sentence or the opening sentence is the most important sentence or the key sentence. And the opening sentence has to introduce the topic of the paragraph. So you can follow the opening sentence with some supporting sentences which describe more about the topic of the paragraph and this will form the body of the paragraph and then you can conclude the paragraph with a closing sentence and if needed you can give a heading to the paragraph. So there are a few more guidelines that you can follow while writing the paragraph and these are given in page number 43 of your textbook under the writing exercise. So please go through these guidelines. There is also a small sample paragraph given in the textbook. So have a look at it and write your own paragraph. You can write the paragraph in your notebook. Now let's discuss the next exercise and this is the my word bank exercise. And it says write the synonyms for these words. Do you know what are synonyms? The synonym of a given word is another word which has the same or almost the same meaning as that of the given word. So here four words are given. They are large, patterns, mild and royal. You have to find another word or a synonym for each of these words which mean the same thing. You can make use of a dictionary to complete this exercise. You can write the synonyms here in the textbook itself. And once you are done writing the answers to all these exercise questions, you can take a picture of your answers and post them in Microsoft Teams. So let me remind you the homework for the day. You have to do all the exercise. You have to complete the exercise from this chapter and take a picture and submit that picture in Microsoft Teams. So that's all for today, children. We'll meet in the next class. Till then, bye.